Hello YouTube, this is IDNO bringing you another episode of Advanced Redstone Circuits. So last time I showed you guys how to make a uh, game, uh, Lights Out. This week what I'd like to do is show you something that's going to be used in the, uh, the CPU quite extensively. Um, it's not the biggest of parts, but it's still pretty cool and uh, very important. Um, it's called uh, a right shifter, and basically what it does is it takes whatever bits are on the line, like say you have something like this going down the line. It would take the data for this and shift it one to the right, so turn it into this. And I have one attached to my ALU right now, and it's this right here. So right now I have these datas. Let's go ahead and throw these values on here. These torches. And if I shift it, it goes like that. So it's really easy to make, and uh, it's very fast. I This one right here does not add any delay to the actual function of the ALU. And the overall size isn't too much bigger either, because, I mean, the original ALU came out to here, right here anyway. So, I mean, it adds an extra one, two, three, four blocks. So... Um, it's it's very small. So anyway, let me show you how to build that. Uh, you start off with normal orange wool, like I always do, and uh, go like this. And this is going to be again two wide tie level, um, so meaning that there's going to be two of them in a two wide setup. That way you can stack it as many times as you need to to make it an even uh, number of blocks. So. Uh, first line goes here, and then we'll go like this, throw that there, and what this does is this actually blocks that right there temporarily, and when it's extended, it hits that and blocks that, and both of these are very important. Um, this is essentially what allows it to shift. So when you uh, extend the piston, it's going to block off its original channel and then just basically open up another channel for it to go to the right. Um, now, I I do have other designs for a, uh, a right shifter, but or a left shifter, sorry. And I don't really think they're that necessary because when you add two numbers in binary together, they left shift. Um, I can show you guys how to make them if you want, but I mean, it's not that necessary for most CPUs. So, um, anyway, let's go ahead and get this next one up built. This is the second channel here. And the reason we have this dip here is because uh, if we didn't, then the this redstone wire would come up onto this. So, we're just trying to avoid that uh, by doing this. <coughs> Okay, like this, bump these up, and to avoid any kind of, uh, let's see, oh, yep, that goes there, okay, and that's basically it, sorry. All right, and then we need to go like this. Actually, it goes like that, and that just goes like that. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so okay, and let me just go ahead and copy this and stack it. And again, there's not a lot of logic in this, um, but it is a circuit, so I figured it was important for you guys to know. And this is something that is used in CPUs. So, um, stack that three times so we get eight bits. All right, and then if we go like this, you'll be able to see it shift. So, do this here. All right, so you see these going through like this. Extend the piston, and now they're done another wide. So that's how you make a right shifter. 
Um, now, one more thing I wanted to show you guys over here was uh, my comparator that uh, Jazza Hat and I came up with uh, is not functioning. Um, we believe after the 11 point, or 1.2.5 update, uh, something changed that is making it no longer function. So, or we just, you know, maybe built it incorrectly the first time, that's more likely. Um, either way, we needed to come up with another a or another comparator that would work for us. Uh, this is the one that we're using. This was can this was designed by uh, two people, two friends of mine, uh, Proper English and uh, Anomalous Cobra. If I go ahead and link to their channels in the description. And uh, basically, uh, it's you know it, it works just the same as my comparator. Um, it's a little bit kind of funky, and I wanted to design the cells to see exactly how they work before I uh, showed you guys how to or you know how to build it. Um, as you can see, there's a little bit more logic on the end and um, testing of you know logic before it actually sends out the information than what we had. So that's slightly more complicated. Uh, but I will show you guys how to make this, and uh, if I can improve on it, then I'll do that. Uh, before I do so um, I just got this like an hour ago, so I haven't had, really had a chance to look over it. So um, What else? Oh, I <laughs> This is pretty fun. I thought you guys might like this. It's a uh, Scanner sort of um, And I'll show you what you do so uh, On the front we've got a uh, nice big piston screen and It's a bit messed up right now It's concerning it probably won't work. Let's see Someone was probably messing with it, and it doesn't function. So, anyway, what it has is uh, you've got a, a uh, display, and the display is made up of this cell right here, which is uh, two by two, tileable. So it's two high, two wide, and however many long. And what we've got is the uh, the four pistons, and then these go into it. And the reason we have this piece of glowstone here is to stop, uh, you know redstone power from going down into the block below it. It's a weird bug glitch. So actually you know what? let me let me go ahead and build it for you guys so you can see exactly how it goes. So um and this is just stacked uh eight eight tall by uh you know eight wide. Just a moment. Alright, sorry about that. Alright, so it goes like this. This keeps the uh delay on both of these sides of the pistons the same. Okay. Go like this. And like this. Put that there. And this is where it gets really simple. Um, it's honestly just a monostable circuit hooked up to a uh, T flip-flop. Um, and the monostable goes like this. This is a fun little design that I've, I've used in the past and completely forgot about this time, but, um, <clears throat> but yeah, this is, this is it right here, so let's go ahead and, okay, we got that right there, and then this right here allows for two things. Uh, so first, when it's when it needs to go up, which it will always need to go up into this block for each and every one of these lines, um, it allows it to pass up. But um, since there's this right here, it will not allow it to pass this way. So since you have, let me go ahead and do this real quick. Um, so say there's another one stacked on top of this right here. Uh, if you power this like this, it only goes into here instead of going up this way. So this allows you to kind of get that right there. Um, I could have done it differently by offsetting it, but that would have messed up a lot of other things, so I didn't do it that way. But as you can see, what happens is the monostable circuit pulses here for a one tick pulse, and then that triggers this piston, which doesn't have enough time for it to uh, stay out, so it uh, you know goes like that and uh, extends it's the block out and leaves it there. So that's essentially how I draw the image. It's uh, it functions like a T-flip-flop. I don't really know if I'd consider it a T-flip-flop, but yeah, that's what it is. So, uh, let's see here. This right here is an XY selector. So, while um, this line right here is lit, 
it's not going to let any um, data pass through here uh, onto uh, the model stable circuits. So that's that allows me to control what information goes through when. Um, and then you just have this data coming in this way on the uh, the buses coming back here. There's a lot of them in there. Um, I did not build those by hand. That was mainly uh, world edited. I think I did one row and then stacked them this way. So anyway, we've uh, it's got yeah this X Y selector, monostable circuit, T flip flop, and then the pixel design right here. And then um, down here you'll recognize that I have my uh, buffer from before. And the only difference is I just have it so it's automatically set to stop on this one, and then uh, the beta just streams into it uh, line by line. And then once it gets to this line right here, it will trigger, or rather, once the uh, this thing over here uh, finishes scanning the image in, which is what I'm showing you next, uh, it triggers this line right here, which goes all the way down here. Um, hits this monostable right here, which is another design, and that's just torch repeater with a two tick pulse, three tick pulse, and then uh, torch here. Um, creates a one tick pulse, which powers this block, which covers this, and turns off the inhibitors here, allowing the image to be drawn. So um, when you push play, there's another line that comes around. And uh, this goes both to the uh, machine over there, the scanner, and then down here, sorry, uh, down through here onto this line, down here, and just powers this you know, block, which pulls this back. So it's uh, really simple. So I'm going to go ahead and draw you a quick image, and we'll see if we can't get it to... Uh, appear on the screen. Um, my main plan for this is actually to uh, take a scanner and a display and hook them both up to clients for my uh, redstone router that I built, MCTP, with uh, Elsigoat, and uh, stream an image through my little transfer protocol. Uh, which I believe will actually be the first, uh, you know, file transfer done in Minecraft yet. So, let's see here. How do you draw this? Got to use the orange wool. All right. You already know what I'm drawing? Let me know. <laughs> Should be pretty easy to guess. Got a nice little creeper face there. So what will happen is when I push that button over there, it's going to reset all of these lines, the uh, buffer cells, at once, allowing them to be cleared out and ready for when this thing starts going. And then it hits this right here, starting this clock. So um, powers this piston down, which allows the signal to go through these lines, and turns off this, this torch right here. So it just basically what it'll do is it'll pulse every, I think, you... 15, 20 ticks, and uh, pulse onto these lines in a certain order, pushing this glass line in a circle. And every single time it pushes a uh, pushes it one further, it pulses this line, which uh, go through here. If it's a piece of glowstone or glass, then it doesn't react. But if it's a piece of wool, then it sends it basically down these lines into these monostable circuits which go into the buffer cell. So, it's a pretty simple system. Um, the logic was kind of annoying at first, but we got it working. Uh, let me go ahead and run this. And it's going to be kind of laggy, so I apologize for that. And you can see in the background, maybe, you can see it shifting along. Maybe. Nope, looks like it's... Uh, Possibly stuck. Let's see. Nope, it went. Okay. And we should actually have the image on the screen. Oh, there we go. Sweet. Uh, it looks like it's offset by one. That's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, no, that's uh, basically it. Maybe I drew that wrong. Let me see. Interesting. 
Yeah, it's offset by one. That's kind of weird. Huh. I'm uh, not sure why it did that, but, you know, there's always glitches like this when you just build something. I, I literally built this in like half an hour uh, with a friend of mine. Maybe a little bit longer than that, but still, you know. Um, so, anyway, it, it works, mostly, sort of. Um, this is another design I did. It, uh, instead of it doing it that way, it actually streams the image in and then uses this right here, which is called a shift register, um, to step through line by line and print it on the screen. It was really slow. <laughs> kind of stupid, but... Anyway, um... Yeah, that should be it for this week. Uh, if you like the video, you know, comment, subscribe, leave a suggestion in the box. Um, I'm going to hopefully be maintaining this speed, um, although I, I am really running kind of out of, out of ideas uh, on circuits to build. It's going to come down to me just straight up recording me building the CPU um, instead of doing tutorials about it. So if you have anything that you've been curious about you know, building, something that you want to build, uh, but you don't really know how that's done, just let me know, and uh, hopefully it'll be, you know, enough time for me to kind of research it if I don't already know how to build it, and then kind of uh, get you guys caught up to speed on one. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people on the RDF, and, you know, if I don't know how to build it, chances are they will, and so, you know, we, we can uh, kind of get you squared away. Also, I wanted to say uh, the Redstone Development Foundation has a YouTube channel, which is doing a uh, series of videos for basic logic gates. Um, if you're watching this, you probably already know most of the logic gates, but I would suggest if you're kind of feeling a little bit uh, not, you know, 100% on those, go watch them, you know, uh, give them a view, because they're, you know, they, there's valuable information there for anyone. Uh, but, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of stuff there, so... Um, and then we're also going to be doing other, you know, videos. I think we're going to be doing a new series soon. Um, if that can get off the ground, I really hope it does. I, I, I completely plan on being involved with that, so that'll be fun. Um, but, uh, oh, wow. Let's see here. Sorry about that, guys. I guess I can't do that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Got to uh, uphold the uh, the the rules here. Uh, language is a must. So um, anyway, yeah. Uh, if you guys again, if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the box below. Um, but uh, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next week. Peace.